Hi guys, today I'm going to take a look at how to fine tune ChatGPT 3.5 or other large language models on Azure. Now, I did this kind of with the intent of just trying to explore how this works. So to make this a little bit more fun than I typically do for a lot of my demos is I took a large joke database and I used that as the source material for training the model. So I divided that into training data and validation data and then ran it through the training algorithm and then it produces a custom version of ChatGPT. GP 3.5 based off that training data. So I'm going to walk you through the process in which I use to create the data set. And then I will show you how I created the model and then I'll look at the results of it. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's just jump right into the code and the data set. And then I will show you how it works in Azure and then we'll see the results in action. So this is the working folder that I've been working with for this project. And it started with this data set right here called jokes.json. Now this particular data set has thousands of jokes in it. And each one of these jokes has a few fields. Uh, it has a body and then it has a category and ID and rating. Now I'm mostly interested in the body because this is what we want to use for training large language models. This is natural language. So it's ideal for training large language models with. It also has this category, and I'll look at why that's important in a minute, but this is what I'm gonna be basing my training on. So with this data set, I basically created a smaller subset of this into this file right here called jokes uh, J JSON L. And, joke, and a JSON L is just another kind of JSON where you have one line of JSON per record, basically. So each line is a separate object and it encapsulates all the fields and data in that single line. Line. So each one of these becomes a data point, which I would then use for either training or validation. And with this data set, after I uh, processed this, I ended up with around 10,000 jokes that met the criteria that, of what I was looking for. So to go from this to this, I use this Python script right here. It's really pretty trivial. Uh, it just basically reads in the joke source data and it looks for anything that is under 750 bytes, which is just kind of an arbitrary threshold that I chose because I wanted to focus on shorter jokes like one-liners and knock-knock jokes and those kinds of jokes that are just really basic and simple. I didn't want you know, long jokes. So I filtered out a lot of things using that line. And then once it was able to filter out all of that, it just wrote these into the JSON L file. Now the process of going from that original format into the JSON L is looks like this. And this is the format that the processor that's going to be training the model expects. So it requires three different roles. And each one of these roles is significant in the way that the model will use for training data. There are three roles. We have the system, the user, and the assistant. Now the system is basically the training algorithm or basically the whole system as it's represented. So the role here is where you're declaring kind of the intent of what you're using this for. So it looks like this. You basically describe in prose what you're trying to accomplish with this system. So this one says you're a joke generator. The usual ask you for a joke of a certain variety and you should generate a joke in response. And so this is where that category came in. Uh, the certain variety would be the category, like a knock-knock joke or a one-liner or a blonde joke or a political joke or a religious joke, whatever it might be. Each one of those varieties will then allow the model to figure out what I'm talking about. And so the role of user then will type in a question. Tell me a blank, blank joke. Tell me a knock, knock joke. Tell me a one liner joke. Tell me a blonde joke, whatever it might be. And that is the user's prompt. And then the role of the assistant is to give me a response in response to whatever this might be. And that response will then be the content of the joke, which is the body of what we just saw. So uh, that's how I'm building these particular JSON L rows with this data. And that's exactly what we're going to be expecting once we upload these into Azure. And so once we once I did this, I created that larger JSON L file and I had it as an output from this script, I broke it into two smaller files, one for training data and then one for validation data. And so I basically did an 80-20 split. So 80% of it was for training data and 20% was for validation data. And with that, you end up with several thousand jokes in each category. I didn't really uh, specify or handpick either one. I just kind of went to the last 
fifth of the actual data that I have and said, this is validation data. It took the first uh, 80% and said, that's training data. And that's how I chose the, to distinguish between the two. But otherwise, the data formats are the same. So with that, let's go over to the Azure portal and look at how you create this using this data format. So I'm here in the Azure portal and I have already created this uh, particular OpenAI instance that I have here. Now, this feature that I'm using is currently in preview, so it's not available in every region. So you have to find a region that it is available in preview. And if you want to kind of repeat this, but anyways, once you have that um, created, uh, fine tuning the model is actually pretty straightforward. So you just go over to the uh, Azure OpenAI Studio and it will pull up the OpenAI Studio. And uh, with this, I have already created the model. Now going through this uh, and training it live would take several hours to do. And it took pretty much overnight for mine to process. I think that's because it's still a preview feature. Uh, the, the cues for training these things is pretty long. So it took quite a while for mine to get done. I really don't have that much data, truth be told. I think there was just a long queue of people that were also testing out this feature. And so mine took, you know, I think like 10 or 18 hours to, to train. I went to bed and woke up the next day and it was done. Anyways, uh, the uh, model itself, uh, is pretty easy to do. So within the context of OpenAI Studio, you have this uh, menu on the left here and you can go over to models and this is where you can create custom models. Now you can create a custom model right here and this is where you would create the model. Before you do that, you need to upload files. So uh, to upload files, you have the two files that you want to upload, the training data and the validation data. And these have to be separate files. So uh, you can upload a new data set right here, and then you can just basically choose the file from your hard drive, which in my case, I chose training and validation. So I just uploaded each one of those. And this is the results file. We'll look at that whenever uh, we go through the process of this. So once you've uploaded the files, then you come over here to create a custom model and you just walk through this wizard and you pick the model that you want to work with. So you have Babbage, you have DaVinci, and you have GPT-35 Turbo. And you can give it a, a suffix. I called mine jokes, uh, but if you, could get, you wanted to do it again, you could call it jokes too. And then you pick your training data. So training data, I chose jokes.json.json-l. And then for validation data, you just pick that same format, and but the validation form. And then you can do number of epochs, which is basically the number of iterations that's going to go over this in order to produce the model. Um, fewer is generally less accurate, but it takes a shorter amount of time. More is going to be more accurate, but it takes a lot longer to train. So that's just something that you kind of figure out. And so we go up to five epochs, but it, the default, it's going to start around two. So I just went the default there and then went to review. And so this is my uh, review. And then you can hit start training job and it will start the training job. Now it'll take a while for it to complete, like I said, but once it's done, you will then see the model in your list of models. So you can see that you have the base models right here, Babbage, DaVinci, and uh, GPT-35 Turbo are some of the base models, but you can't use this custom models with, uh, with some of these other models that are available here. But in any case, for my purposes, I just went with the uh, 3.5 Turbo and then customized it and ended up with uh, this custom built model that we see right here. And this custom built model is um, pretty much just one that is uh, there, there you can see it took total training time was 18 hours, 35 minutes, 13 seconds. Actually, most of that was spent waiting, but you, you see the, the results there. And here is the output, basically that CSV file. This is the output from it, and it shows you the, the training loss. Um, and then you can see the, the token accuracy, um, the mean accuracy, uh, the closer it is up to here, the better off it is. And mine, you know, it's around the 70, you know, did it, you know just an eyeball average around um, 70 percent tile or so for that validation loss is, is lower so you know around 1.5 ac average there and then uh, you have the so the validation token accuracy is not showing up here and neither is this one but you can see that these two are showing some pretty promising so once your model is trained you now have a model that looks something like this the next thing you need to do is create a deployment i already have one right here but to create a new deployment you just basically pick your model which would be uh, either your fine-tuned model or one of these base models. I'm going to go with fine-tuned model. And then you can use version one, of course, uh, which I only have one version of this. And you can give it a name. So you can call it joke 
uh, GPT or something like that. I'm gonna call it GPT-1. And then you have advanced options right here for the number of tokens that you can use per minute and so on. But I'm just gonna create this deployment. And so the deployments are basically just sandboxes, if you will, that are interactive, that people can call through APIs and so on. I don't need two of these, but I just created an additional one. Once you have the deployment ready, now you can then interact with it. So to do that, we're gonna come up here to chat. And this is where I can interact with this model. So I have this, this system message right here. You can see that if I click on examples down here, I have the same pieces of data that I put into my model. I have a user role, I have an assistant role and a system role. Uh, I don't need uh, the user and assistant role. I just need the system role right here. So that's when I'm gonna put in this information right here. So I've already saved this. So if I wanted to change that, I could put a space and says, oh yeah, you need to change it. So in any case, it says you should, you are a joke generator. You should generate a joke in response to the kind of joke the user asked for. So with that, I can then ask it to tell me a joke. Tell me a knock, knock joke. Now this might generate some nonsense. It might generate something that is meaningful. I don't know. Let's just see what happens when I tell it to generate a knock, knock. Let's see. Um, knock, knock. Who's there? Little old lady, little old lady who? Gee, I didn't know you could yodel. Okay. That's pretty funny. Um, nice little kid jit knock, knock joke there. Let's do one more. See what it does. Knock, knock. Who's there? Little, oh, it got, it did a repeat. Sometimes that happens with, uh, GPT models. Let's see what it says. If I say enter a computer joke, see if it's got a, um, computer joke in his database here in the model here. Uh, what do, what kind of photos do computers take? Screenshots. Ha ha ha. That's kind of funny too. Or you could say, tell me a work joke. Let's see if this generates something that's nonsensical or something else. Um, and it's going to say, okay, here's, a, it's, it's a joke. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can see that it did generate a joke. So that's kind of what I was expecting. So with this in mind, it's it's something that, I don't know, it's, it's, res it's responding intelligently to the kind of joke that I'm putting in, which is kind of what I want it to do. Um, now, it might have been able to do this without you know, the fine-tuned model, but with the fine-tuned data, it will definitely get better results, I think. And that's the point of fine-tuning is it gives you more contextually aware results for the domain that you're interested in, which mine, of course, is the joke shot, jokes right here. And so each one of them has a different category, which is work and computer and knock-knock and so on, uh, that you would then be able to produce a joke in response to that. Now you have some different things over here. Um, these different parameters do different things uh, for the output. So you can do maximum response tokens, temperatures, the random randomness, and uh, this one's also controls randomness as well, stop sequences and so on. All of these are just different parameters that you can use to put into uh, the actual query, and then it will return some results that will vary depending on what you have here. And if you exceed some kind of max token response or something like that, it'll give you an error. But all in all, it's a fairly straightforward demonstration of how this works. It's nothing uh, earth shattering what I've done here, but it's still just a fun way to kind of look at it and see how it actually works whenever you take some data and apply it to it to get a fine tuned model out of chat GPT 3.5. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe to the channel as always drop a comment in the comment section down below if you like this also share this with your friends and um as always thanks for watching if you like this content please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button you can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below you can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on twitter at the one mule and as always thanks for watching